Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course, Mastering Docker. My name is Ahmed for Idionix, and this is the third section of this course. We are discussing Docker containers, and let's have a look now at a new topic, which is how to bundle environment variables within a container while it is being started up or while it is being created. We have already seen a brief example of this bundling when we were working with MySQL, and we said that MySQL needs a root password to be bundled with the creation process. MySQL needs a default password to be for the admin user or the root user, and we have chosen this password to be just admin. Now let's have a refresher about environment variables in, in, in general. If you are using Windows or Mac or Linux, all of those systems use environment variables in order to customize the way the system works and its behavior. So for example, let's clear the screen. This is the Ubuntu machine that I'm using to host my Docker daemon. If you type the word env or the command env or environment, you will see that there are a lot of environment variables that is that are used by the system. A very important one, or perhaps it's the most important one, is the path variable. The path variable is an environment variable and it contains all the paths in which the system will search for a command when you run it without its full path. So the path variable is one of the environment variables that are used by the system. The containers that you pass that you create are, as we said, based on Linux. Accordingly, they do have their own environment variables and they do have their own settings that you can override if you want to. So let's have a quick example. Docker run busybox. Okay, and as we said, this is a busybox image, just a, a tiny Linux kernel. And let's run this command env on that container. Let's see what happens. Now observe the output. This busybox kernel, this is this default busybox kernel, has the has three environment variables: the path, which is of course one, which is of course the most important environment variable of all, the host name, and the host name by default is the container ID or the shortened version of the container ID, and the home for the user, which is slash root. Now imagine that I want to create or override one of those environment variables. I can simply use, do this using the minus E option. The minus E and E for environment is used to override this behavior. So I can say that the host name, I don't want the host name to be the shortened version of the container ID, I want the host name to be something else. So I want the host name to be bbox, for example. Now let's run this command again and pass in the environment command to be run after the container is created and as you can see here the host name becomes bbox instead of the container ID or the shortened version of the container ID it becomes bbox so in this example I have successfully overridden the host name of the machine or the container which is just an environment variable however I can create my own environment variables so for example I can say db equals name for example I can add another environment variable, and if you want to add other environment variables, you will have to precede each one with another minus e. So we said db equals main, we can say minus e user equals admin, or something. Just These are just two environment variables that has nothing to do with the default container. They are just new environment variables that I have created for just for this example. Now let's run enter. And as you can see here, I have two environment variables bundled in the output, db equals main and user equals admin. Okay, so this is for the just the basic images that are hosted by Docker, one of which is the one of which is busybox. But when we have a more complicated image like WordPress, WordPress does not contain just the, the, uh, the, the Linux kernel or the Linux operating system. It contains the operating system, it contains a web server, it contains the default installation of WordPress. So it's going to need much, much more environment variables than the ones that we have just viewed. So, so let's have a look, for example, for the Docker. So let's have a look, for example, Docker PS. This is the containers. We have WPress here. Let's use our exit command, pass in the name of the container, which is WordPress or WPress, and pass in the env command. Now, as you can see here, I have a lot and a lot of environment variables, much more than the ones that I have seen in just a basic image, just a basic busybox image. As you can see here, I have MySQL port, MySQL in MySQL root password. I have 
PHP INA Dyer. I have also WordPress version. This uh, this is the this is the SHA1 string that has to do that this is something that has to do with the security implementation in WordPress and so on. So if I want to create a new WordPress container the same way I did before in this command, I can even make this command a little bit longer and start passing in environment variables like for example WordPress which has to be okay word press underscore db underscore host equal let's say main server and perhaps main server here is the host name of another server that is hosting the database now if I passed in this environment variable to the WordPress container while it is created it is going to search for a container in the name of me it is going to search for a server that is called main server as the host name that is hosting the database on which the WordPress will work or with which the WordPress container has to has to interact okay so this is how you can inject environment variables inside the container and of course this helps makes your and of course this helps make your container environment agnostic as we have said in the as we have said in the previous lecture now the first method of letting now the first method of making this now the first method of making your environment now the first method of making your container environment agnostic is that creating a read-only file system so that you can ensure that nothing can be written to the file system by the host. Nothing should be changed to the file system. You can take it just as it is and put it on another machine or another server. And it's just and it just has to work the same way it did because nothing was changed. The second thing you have to do is to pass in the environment variables manually to the container while creation. Again, to ensure that those environment variables are passed in the same way to when you create that when you recreate that container on another system, perhaps you can use a script, uh, a bash script, for example, and, and and put those environment variables inside it and put that Docker one command and instruct it to use those environment variables while creation, and this will ensure that your containers are going to be just are going to be copied the same way you copy files from one machine to another. They'll just run and work the same way they run. They ran and worked on your own machine. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. My name is Ahmad for Idionics and see you next.